Are you struggling to make ends meet, and you just can't stop thinking about how to save money? Then this just might be the video you're looking for. Even if you don't have a lot of disposable income, it's important to try and set some money aside. Whether it's for an emergency fund, a big purchase, or just to have some financial security, saving money can give you peace of mind and help you achieve your goals. In this video, we'll share 6 tips for saving money even when you're working with a limited budget. Make sure to watch the whole video to find our bonus tip at the end. Let's get started. Number 6. Make a budget. A smart way to make a budget is to start by tracking your expenses for a month to get a sense of where your money is going. This can help you identify areas where you may be able to cut back. You can use a budgeting app or software, or simply write everything down in a notebook. Once you have a good understanding of your spending habits, you can start to set financial goals for yourself and allocate your money accordingly. It's a good idea to allocate money for necessary expenses such as rent, utilities, and groceries first, and then divide the remainder of your budget among your other expenses and savings. It's also important to be realistic about your budget and to not try to cut back too much in one area, as this can be unsustainable. Remember to leave some room for flexibility and to account for unexpected expenses that may come up. Finally, it can be helpful to review your budget regularly, perhaps on a monthly basis, to ensure that you are staying on track and making progress towards your financial goals. Number 5. Save money on groceries. Saving money on groceries is important for a number of reasons. For one, it can help stretch your budget further, allowing you to save money for other important expenses or goals. Additionally, being mindful of your grocery spending can help you eat healthier, as you'll be more inclined to make meals at home rather than eating out. Finally, reducing your grocery expenses can also be good for the environment, as it can encourage you to buy local, in-season products and reduce food waste. Whether you're on a tight budget or just looking to cut costs, here are some examples on how to save money on your next trip to the store. First, make a budget and stick to it, determine how much you can afford to spend on groceries each week or month, and try to stick to that budget as closely as possible. Don't be afraid to check out multiple stores to see which one has the best prices on the items you need. Use coupons and discounts, look for coupons in the newspaper or online, and see if your store offers any discounts for shopping on certain days or for buying in bulk. It may look time-consuming, but if you're used to it, it only takes a few minutes each day. You'll be surprised of the difference in the end. Plan your meals in advance, make a list of the meals you want to make for the week and only buy the ingredients you need for those meals. This can help you avoid impulse purchases. Don't be afraid of buying generic or store brand products, these products are often just as good as the name brand versions, but they are usually less expensive. Avoid pre-cut or pre-packaged foods, these types of foods are often more expensive than buying the whole item and cutting it yourself. Consider buying in bulk, if you have the storage space, buying non-perishable items in bulk can save you money in the long run. Just be sure to use the items before they expire. And last, but not least, use cash instead of credit. Using cash can help you stick to your budget and avoid overspending. This last example leads us to the next tip on how to save money. Number 4. The Cash Envelope Method The Cash Envelope Method is a budgeting technique designed to help people manage their spending and save money. It involves dividing your budget into different categories, such as groceries, entertainment, and bills, and setting aside a specific amount of cash for each category in separate envelopes or in a wallet. When you need to make a purchase in one of these categories, you take the cash out of the appropriate envelope and use it to pay for the item. For example, let's say you have budgeted $100 for groceries this month. You would take out $100 in cash and put it in an envelope labeled groceries. When you go to the grocery store, you would only use the cash in this envelope to pay for your groceries. If you run out of cash before the end of the month, that means you have exceeded your budget for that category and will need to cut back on spending or use money from another category to make up the difference. The cash envelope method can be a very useful tool for people who have trouble sticking to a budget or who tend to overspend using credit or debit cards. By using cash instead of electronic payment methods, it can create a sense of accountability and help you stay on track with your spending goals. If you like what you're seeing, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more. Number 3. Save Money on Housing A general rule of thumb is to aim to spend no more than 30% of your gross income on housing expenses, including rent or mortgage payments, property taxes, and insurance. 
This is often referred to as the 30% rule. It is important to remember that this is just a guideline and you may need to adjust the percentage based on your own circumstances. For example, if you have a high income and no other debts, you may be able to afford to spend more on housing. On the other hand, if you have other debts or financial obligations, you may need to allocate a smaller percentage of your income towards housing in order to stay within your budget. Ultimately, the most important thing is to find a balance that works for you and enables you to meet your financial goals. These are some ways to help you save money on housing. Renting a smaller or shared apartment or house. One way to save on housing costs is to consider downsizing to a smaller living space. This can involve renting a smaller apartment, studio, or even a shared bedroom in a house or apartment. Renting a smaller unit can be a good option if you don't need a lot of space or are willing to make some sacrifices in order to save money on rent. Additionally, sharing a living space with others, such as roommates or family members, can be an effective way to lower your housing costs by dividing the cost of rent and utilities among multiple people. Renting a room in a house or apartment. Instead of renting an entire unit, you could consider looking for a place that rents out individual rooms. This can be a good option if you are willing to share common areas with other people, such as a kitchen, living room, and bathroom. Sharing not only the common areas with other people but the whole place instead is another good option. By splitting the cost of rent and utilities among multiple people, you can significantly reduce the amount of money you need to pay each month. Looking for housing in areas with lower rents. Another way to save on housing costs is to broaden your search to include neighborhoods or areas where rents are generally lower. This can be a good option if you are willing to live further away from the city center or in a less desirable location in exchange for lower rent prices. You can research average rental prices in different areas to find neighborhoods that fit your budget and preferences. Number 2. Save money on entertainment. Look for free or low-cost options. There are plenty of ways to have fun without spending a lot of money. Check out local events and activities, such as festivals, concerts, and museum exhibits, that are free or discounted. For example, many public libraries offer a variety of free programs, such as book clubs, movie screenings, and craft workshops. Another way to save money on entertainment is to take advantage of discounts and deals. For example, if you're a student, you might be able to get discounted tickets to a concert or theater performance by presenting your student ID at the box office. You can also save money by hosting your own entertainment at home. Invite friends over for a game night, movie marathon, or cook-off. This can be a fun and budget-friendly way to spend time with friends and family. Finally, be selective about what you choose to pay for. Consider whether the cost is worth it for the entertainment you'll receive. By being mindful about your entertainment choices, you can stretch your budget further and still have plenty of fun. Number 1. Sell items you no longer need or use. One way to make some extra money on a low income is to sell items that you no longer need or use. This can be a great way to declutter and free up space in your home, as well as make some extra cash. You can consider having a garage sale or using online marketplaces like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or Craigslist to sell your items. For example, if you have old clothes that you no longer wear, you could sell them on a site like Poshmark. Or, if you have furniture or household items that you no longer need, you could list them for sale on Craigslist. Take a good look, you'll be surprised of the hidden treasures laying around your house. And now, it's time for the bonus tip. Have you ever stopped to consider that you may be paying more for bills and expenses than you need to? It's worth taking the time to negotiate these costs, as it can help you save money in the long run. Here's how to do it. Don't be afraid to ask for a discount or a better deal. It never hurts to ask, and you may be surprised at how much you can save just by negotiating. Know your worth. If you're a good customer with a history of paying your bills on time, use that to your advantage. Research the competition. If you're not getting the deal you want, it may be worth looking into what other companies are offering. This can give you leverage in negotiations. Consider the long term. While it may be tempting to go with the cheapest option up front, it's important to also consider the long-term cost. A slightly higher upfront cost may save you money in the long run if it includes better terms or benefits. You can potentially save hundreds or even thousands of dollars each year. 
Don't be afraid to advocate for yourself and your wallet, it pays off in the end. We hope that these tips and strategies were helpful for you and that you feel more confident in your ability to stretch your budget further. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. We post new content every week and would love to have you as a part of our community. See you in the next one.